Go. Cool. 
the stars are brightly shining it is the night of the dear savior's Christ was born. Oh, night, divine, oh, night, oh, night, divine. Truly, he taught. To love one another, his law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise me, let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh praise his name. His gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise. We let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever. His A people living in darkness, living in the land of the shadow of death. Is this you? 
Where is God in the silence? Where is God in the darkness? Could it be that your pain, your grief, all the world's suffering, all the world's darkness is the genesis of new life? For out of the darkness, when there was only emptiness, God spoke forth light. From within the darkness of the earth, toiling up from beneath the soil, God brought forth life. After that dark and stormy flood, adrift for 40 nights, from the hand of God came a promise. After the darkness of the wilderness, years wandering lost, trying to hold on to faith, he gave a promised land. From the darkness of a mother's womb, all the questions, all the expectation, God formed a child. And from the darkness of that silent night, when it seemed the voice of God was unheard, when it seemed the hand of God was unseen, that silence was broken by the cries of a baby, a son, a savior. God wastes nothing, not even our darkness. For we know that for those who love God, even in our times of darkness, God is working for our good. So today, in the midst of whatever darkness you feel, know this, today a light has dawned. Hope is not lost, hope is never lost. Today, hope is born. <laughs> Will you sing with us? Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
seated. Merry Christmas. That was absolutely unmerry. Merry Christmas. That's right. You are a merry bunch. And if you're at home or watching on some other place or in the future in this evening, we thank you for joining us here at the Rock Church for our Christmas Eve service. Uh, Tonight's going to be a special night as it's a mix of uh, scripture reading of a few different people sharing thoughts on parts of the Christmas story. And we're going to uh, light the Christ candle at at the end of the service along with other special music. So thank you for joining us wherever you're at today. This Advent season, as we come to the end of it, of where we've celebrated hope and joy and love and peace, it's actually the reality for all of us, all of us who know Jesus. No matter the brokenness of our world, no matter the brokenness of our own situations, no matter our day ins, day outs, where we feel up and down, The reality is our foundation that we can come back to is that of hope, joy, love, and peace in Christ. Thousands of years ago, followers of God looked at for the coming of a deliverer, the coming of a Savior, this Messiah who would be Christ the Lord. Oh, I I forgot. I'm the guy talking. I can take this off. We... uh, We uh, get to celebrate and think back to how they had expectancy and how they had hope for a coming Messiah. And today, we still have this hope, this joy, this love, this peace in a coming Savior. And whether we get to go be with him first in heaven or whether we're still on this earth and he's coming, we expect to see him again. Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 says this, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Tonight we want to celebrate the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. He's our light individually, our light for our families, our community, our church. And so we trust that you will be encouraged today. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we are very, very grateful that we can look to you as our Savior, our Lord, our Messiah. And we thank you that 2,000 years ago, you came at the perfect point in time to be God in flesh, to be God incarnated in, human, in a human body, so that you would come and show us the way to the Father. You would teach us how to live following the Father. And then you would come and do the work of, of paying our debts, of dying on the cross and rising again. And so, God, while we celebrate the fact that you came, we, we thank you for all that you have done while you were on this earth and now in our lives. And so, God, we invite you to be blessed, to be glorified as we sing praise to you, as we hear these different thoughts and read your word. God, may you be glorified and may our hearts be encouraged and drawn close to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Chuk and Jennifer are coming at this time to share... Just a thought or two about now that they are parents for just over a year, what it might have been like for Mary and Joseph. And as they come, I'm going to relight the candle from four weeks ago where we talked about hope. And we talk about hope a lot at the Rock Church. We want to be bringing hope to life. Then we talked about love and how God loved us and loved the world that he came. We talked about joy and the joy that comes from knowing our Savior. And then this past week, we talked about peace, and a peace that we can live with God and live our lives in following God. Chuk and Jennifer, and Elijah, forgive me. Hello, everyone. I'm a bit nervous, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, Pastor Dallas was telling us that we are here to sort of provide a bit of a reflection on what it might have been like to be Mary and Joseph, especially because we have a little one. And I think for me, because we're reading the story this evening before we came in, I think um, as Mary at the time, I would have been quite nervous to realize that 
I do not have a husband, and suddenly I find out from an angel that I'm supposed to be giving birth to Christ. So as much of an honor as that would have been, I think, there would have still been the pressure of the day to have somebody before you have a child, that there's an order to things, and that's not how things are working in our life. But at the same time, especially after having Elijah, I recognize how much of a blessing it is to have a little one. They're so dependent on you, and there's just so much you have to teach them. And I think to be the one who would be giving birth to Jesus, Emmanuel, I know that my people have been waiting for a Messiah, and so it would have been an honor at the same time, but not forgetting the reality that, oh, there's another person who's in this relationship, being Joseph, and I don't know how he might handle it. So, yeah, I know. I think that's what I was thinking about when, when I thought of the story. Elijah is not having this. <laughs> um, so uh, I think I think the story of Jesus and Joseph as being the Joseph and uh, Mary is really fascinating because trying to put myself into their shoes, it's um, especially in a culture now. I, I'm trying to think about. Um, I am in contact with my parents, and I'm telling them about this wonderful lady that I want to get married to. And then, and then I call them back again, and I say, I think she's pregnant, and I don't think that I'm responsible for it. Um, <laughs> um, that would be really interesting, because then you have not just my parents, but all my siblings and all the forces, not forces, but all of the people that claim to love me, they'd say to me, um, and rightly so, they would say, you better run away. That's, a, <laughs> that's a, a walkabout woman or something like that. But um, um, so Joseph being an honorable man, hearing from God and believing God that these things are true of Mary, I think um, it speaks to his character. It speaks to how rooted he is with God, that God spoke those words to him in the dreams and he actually believed them to be to be true. Um, you know, mm. you know, I'd, I'd exercise some level of skepticism. <laughs> if I if I had a dream, I'd, I'd go think about what I ate before I went to bed. Um, and uh, but Joseph was um, he believed these things to be true. So that's the biggest part that I thought about. But I also just thinking about when Jesus was born, and you know that this is not your biological child, but, but Joseph did everything to protect Jesus as he was told. So these things, um, I reflect on them and I think about how difficult it must have been for Joseph and, and for Mary at the time. And just thinking about what the communication would be, the couple dynamics and things like that. But I think I believe that when, as the story goes on, whatever they were told to do, they did it. Um, tells me that they both uh, believed in God, they both believed in what the angels had told them, and they believed it with all their hearts, and, and it turned out to be um, the beginning of the salvation of the world. So, and I think just when I reflect on it, I, I, I uh, think about Jesus uh, growing up in his family, and he grew up to be a, a wonderful man. He, he he didn't have any kind of dysfunction. I think that's something that, as I was, as I was, in, as I was reflecting, uh, something that I, I thought I would em emulate um, in the life of Joseph and in the life of Mary, that these people um, were together as, as this story was, something that had never happened before um, was going on in their lives. So that's uh, what I thought.
Now we are going to have the Brotheridges join us on video to um, tell the Christmas story. And then after that, Sheila is going to come and share her reflection on um, the Nativity. In those days, Jesus, Augustus, knew the law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Curnius was governor of the Sierra. All went to their own towns, so towns to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town of Bethlehem to the town of David. Was Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there in er, with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby. While Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth. Then she placed him in a manger. There was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds living out in the fields. Nearby it was night and they were looking after their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news, a great joy. It is for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God, they said. <laughs> may glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may may peace be given to those he's pleased with on earth. The angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said, to one another. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hur hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in a manger after the shepherds had seen him they told everyone they reported what the angel had said about this child all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. She thought about them over and over. The shepherds returned. They gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they had been told.
Mary, the mother of Jesus, born in the town of Nazareth. In Isaiah 7, 14, the prophetic words, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And from Micah 5, 2, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, through you are small among the clans of Judah. Out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. These two prophecies in the Old Testament are about 700 years before the birth of Christ. Who was Mary? Mary was the mother of Jesus. Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Mary was a first century woman of Nazareth. Mary loved God and wanted to serve him. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary to tell her she was chosen and favored by God to be the mother of his son, despite her fear, she exhibited great courage and character. She replied, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph when she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she will give, you, give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So Mary and Joseph began life together. They lived in Nazareth. When it was close to the time for Mary to give birth, it was required of Joseph to go to his hometown of Bethlehem to take part in a Roman census. As the journey began, Mary, close to her time of delivery, began the approximate 90, about 90 mile journey, keeping in mind there was no paved roads, no car, but by foot and perhaps a donkey for Mary to ride on. They would travel south along the flatlands of the Jordan River, west over the hills surrounding Jerusalem, and on into Bethlehem. It was here Mary needed to get ready for the delivery of her baby. They sought shelter in an inn, but there was no room. So they entered a stable where she gave birth, wrapped this baby in swaddling clothes, and lay him in a manger. Yes, the King of Kings and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, born in these humble surroundings. I'm sorry. In a few short years, Mary and Joseph had to move on as an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream telling him to flee to Egypt with Mary and Jesus as Herod was asking to kill all boys in the Bethlehem area and its vicinity who were two years or under. They stayed in Egypt until Herod died and an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to Israel. But Herod's son was reigning in Judea, so Joseph, warned in yet another dream, went and lived in Nazareth, this fulfilling the prophecy that he would be called a Nazarene. Mary exhibited great courage and character during Jesus' earthly life and ministry. She had the mother moments, like when he stayed in Jerusalem, and she and Joseph had to go back looking for him, and after three days found him. In discussion in the temple with the elders, they were amazed at his learning at such a young age. Also at the wedding, when they ran out of wine, and she said to him, they have no more wine, and he replied, woman, why do you involve me? And she said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary, a mother, was also present at the crucifixion of Jesus in Jerusalem. I'm sorry. As she stood at the cross, John 19:25, near the cross of Jesus, stood his mother Mary and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple he loved, here is your mother. From that time on, 
Mary stayed with dis the disciple John in his home. Bill and Jeannie are going to come and share the shepherd's reflection. Most of what we know is, has come from Hollywood and YouTube, and we really don't know a whole lot about who these guys were. We really need to know and understand their place and time in history and in the Bible. So what do we need to know? It's already been read tonight, and it's, it's, part, of, it's part of the story. But the first thing we need to know is that God chose the exact time and the exact place and the exact moment for this son of his to enter the world. I want to read that very briefly. It's, it's very important for us to grasp. It says in Galatians 4.4, 4, But when the time had fully come, the time had fully come. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the right, that receive the full right of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you're a son, God has made you also an heir. Into this place, the world that, go, that God chose at this point in time was a world that was, it was filled with chaos and fear and a time of desperation for most of the people. Israel 
was living and had been for a period of two, over 200 years up and down and then even to A.D. 70 as, a, as people in an occupied territory. Together as a nation, they had fought Rome and lost. And now they were captives in their own country. And everything about this story needs to be understood in the reality that this was not a free people. This was a people of God, but they were under the rule of the strongest nation that had existed ever on the face of the earth. And it's important to recognize also, although we might just read the story so many times, that there's only one reason that Jesus was born in Bethlehem rather than Nazareth was that there had been a Roman law, a, an edict that said, you have to go and do this. And so, being engaged, she is ready to give birth, and she has to make this 90-mile trip to have this done. All this as part of a plan that God had put together. So what's with the shepherds? How do they fit into this picture? Well, in the whole story of the Bible, the long line of shepherds, and beginning with Abraham and others before Jesus, were very important to the life. But we have some crazy ideas about shepherds. Shepherds were, were people of the earth and, and people of the dirt. They, they, they lived outside almost all, all the year. They had a very extremely difficult and demanding job. And in this point in time, probably were very few who owned land and certainly few who owned any sheep, so they were day laborers. And I like to think of them as kind of Jewish cowboys because they had the same situation that they were dealing with. They lived on the land. They were not on a thing. They had to do that. And there was a lot of, a lot of hard work and, and just... The other thing that you have to recognize, and this, they didn't have their six guns. However, it was very common in their world to have to deal with thieves and, and robbers. And David, numerous times, more than once, had to kill a lion and a bear, and wolves were pretty frequently with his rod and his staff. How'd you like to sign up for that job? There's a, a significant element of danger, loneliness, being away from family. And it, it, it struck me very, very directly as I was thinking about this tonight. I have never been to a Christmas Eve service when I was not free to come and go and do as I chose and a lot of times took it for granted. But God sent his son into one of the toughest places on earth because this is where he wanted him to be. And this is where he made his contribution. So what we see when we, hear, we see this and we see it about these kids and bathrobes and beards and all that thing and we laugh about all the shepherds that every, every time we do Christmas. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a delightful thing. But just think, just think the honor that was given to these men. These men were chosen by the living God Almighty to be the first, the first people on the earth to hear of the greatest event that the world would ever see. And on that hillside on the night when they didn't know what was happening, now, although I want to go back and say that these were Jewish cowboys, and that meant they went to synagogue school, and they knew everything that the prophet had said. They knew the Torah. They knew that the, that the Messiah was coming. But they had no idea of what was going to happen that night. It was God's plan to make sure that his son would come. Not only... Not only to the rich and powerful, to those in the places of authority, but to people like you and me who carried out their lives in the best way they knew how. 
and said, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised thing and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is our redemption. Therefore, it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. I'm reading an excerpt from the, the Applause of Heaven by Max Lucado. Luke 2.11 Today your Savior was born in the town of David. He is Christ the Lord. An ordinary knight with ordinary sheep and ordinary shepherds. And were it not for a God who loves to hook an extra onto the front of the ordinary, the night would have gone unnoticed. The sheep would have been forgotten. The shepherds would have slept the night away. But God dances amidst the common. That night he did a waltz. The black sky exploded with brightness. Trees that had been shadows jumped into clarity. Sheep that had been silent became a chorus of curiosity. One minute the shepherd was dead asleep. The next minute he was rubbing his eyes and staring into the face of an alien. The night was ordinary no more. That angel came in the night because that is when lights are best seen. That is when they are most needed. God comes into the common for the same reason. His most powerful tools are the simplest. You can stand.
We are enjoying the light of candles, the light above your head coming from a light bulb. If you're at home, the light coming from your TV screen or computer screen or, or in your house. We get to receive light. And light is kind of a mystery yet. It's, it's both energy and they also talk about light having substance. But we receive light from a source. And the source sends out the light. It comes to where we are. It fills up our room. And we get to enjoy it. When you think of God and the Trinity, a concept that I had never really thought of before until the last few years when I heard somebody mention it is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit operate in perfect unity. And this perfect unity has a perfect flow of love back and forth in all directions amongst all three of the Godhead. And that's about as much of the mystery of the Godhead that I can explain as there's huge books. But we know that the love of God flows back and forth. And out of that unity of perfect love, God, after he had created us in his image and we had gone our own way and lived in the brokenness of our sin, he sent, Jesus the Son was sent to earth out of that perfect love so that we could receive that love, so that we could enjoy that love, that we could experience what it means to be a savior, to have a savior, pardon me. And now, what do we do with that? The fact that Jesus came to, as God, came in the form of human flesh, being both God and man, lived, died, and rose again, as was talked about tonight. Thank you to everybody who shared and put, put your heart and soul into that. Thank you very much. And so what are we to do with that? Well, as receivers of light, we get to enjoy it ourselves, but light is also meant to fill the room and bless others. And so we receive the love of God that comes through Jesus, but we're also to be receptacles or, or to pass it on. That it, We receive it not to hold it to ourselves, but also to be part of the gospel, to be part of the mission of the work of God, to let his love go out to others. And so as we reflect this Christmas and what it means to us, let us also reflect on what it means for others and that we get to have a part in that, in, in allowing the light of God's love to move forward to other people. In just a moment, I'm going to light the Christ candle as we, as we celebrate the coming of Christ. But we have a, a couple of our Bibleville kids, Max and Brooklyn, want to sing a bit of a camp song about God's light. And they're going to come up on the screen. And then following that, uh, the ladies have a, a special song for us. My light has my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you all my lighthouse my lighthouse i will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore oh, 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 oh. safe to shore Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a video now that comes before we do this song. <laughs> Just hold that. <laughs>
she's full of peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of hurt oh come oh come Emmanuel and can you hear the angels singing glory to the light of the world glory for the light of the world is here the drought breaks with the tears of a mother a baby's cry is the sound of love come down come down Join with us as we sing Silent Night.
Jesus is the light of the world. May you be blessed this Christmas. I'm going to pray a Christmas blessing, and then we're going to stand and sing joy to the world with our candles lit and in exaltation of the one whom we love and worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you did come in the form of a babe to lie in a manger and to not stay there, but to do the work to be our Savior. And so we honor and praise you today. We love you today. And Father, for your children, the ones made in your image, we pray that you would watch over them, that you would care for them. Father, in the midst of this COVID season where everything is uh, shaken and, and turned on its head and we can't live the life we're used to living, we pray that you would turn our hearts to look towards you and we would find our, our sustenance, our redemption, our life in you. God, for those who have to isolate this Christmas, for those who are serving others this Christmas, for those who are protecting our, uh, our city, our province, our country, we pray that you would be with them, comfort them, protect them. And Father, may uh, words that they've heard, messages that they've heard, and uh, the fact that it's Christmas stir their hearts, each one, and draw us all closer to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing joy to the world. Thank you so much, and we bless you as you go. Please cover your... Oh. 